I'm going to show you how to download and install the Optic Wave Labs Newtonian Diagonal Calculator. So the first thing we'll do is go to the Optic Wave Labs website. I've got a hot link on my browser here. We'll click that. So we'll go to the Products button and we'll click on that. And the drop-down menu at the bottom has an item called Customer Education. So we'll go to that. So right at the top we've got a description of the diagonal calculator and the download link. So we'll hit that and hit save. So now that's been saved to our computer and I actually have a copy out here on my messy desktop. So we'll go ahead and run the install package. And that'll take just a minute to install. So now that that's installed We've got a uh, quick launch icon on our desktop here, so we'll go ahead and run the program. And the main body comes up. The first thing you'll note is that the units are in inches, so you need to convert your millimeter uh, focal lengths into inches. And that's done simply by dividing the metric units, which are millimeters, by 25.4 and you'll get inches. So I've got a hypothetical mirror set up here. It's a 14 inch diameter mirror with a 65 inch focal length. The next thing we need to know is the distance from the secondary, it's the center of the secondary mirror to the focal plane. And this will be dependent on two things. It's the diameter of your telescope tube and the height of the focuser when it's racked in plus any additional space uh, so I've got a little estimate formula here you can click just to get a start which is half of the 14 which is 7 plus a typical low profile focuser plus a little bit of clearance space you'll want to adjust this based on your design as, as you get going the fully illuminated field is going to be um, determined by whether it's you're building a purely visual scope or you want to do imaging. Um, so I've just got a hypothetical one inch in here as a default. Uh, this would cover small CCD cameras. Um, we'll work through the example here as if we're just going to build a visual scope only. So we want to use somewhere around 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go 0 0.375. Um, and so you notice as we, we type in these values, the result here is calculated as a theoretical size. Now since you can't go out and buy a theoretical size, we'll get the next closest thing and we'll click the specify diagonal checkbox and we'll type in 2.6 inch, which is a common size. And again, as we adjust this, these values down here are uh, calculated in real time. It's going to show you your minimum diagonal size that you can use to get any uh, illuminated field or excuse me not to create vignetting is 2.11. Now we've got an off axis chart that when we hit this button pops up and it's going to show you in a table the field radius and the percent illumination any magnitude decrease. So as we go from the center of our field of view out towards the edge you can see we have increasing fall off and this would be the magnitude of, of intensity that are lost as we go out towards the edge. The illumination graph shows the same thing, 100% um, illumination here and as we move towards the edge of our field it starts dropping off to this red line which is the 70% and that's the the rule of thumb for visual observing. You don't want your fall off to be more than 70%. It's not noticeable up to that point. Um, and so as you move the mouse around, you'll notice on the bottom we've got our field radius and it's also field diameter. So you can kind of analyze your eyepieces. So at our crossover point for this, you can see that we're going to be able to properly, properly illuminate for visual use uh, up to a field diameter of 1.88 inches, which will cover many eyepieces. So this is a pretty good fit for a nice visual scope.